This Veterans Day, I have kind of a special tribute to some Utah veterans that have a very special place in my heart. See, once in a while I do build military aircraft. And once I heard the story of Utah man, the B-24, and its pilot, Walt Stewart, I decided I absolutely had to build a model of this and, well, several of the other aircraft from a very famous mission of World War II. Let's talk a little bit about the man, Walt Stewart, born November 8th of 1917. So here it is, 2018, he'd have been 101 just a couple of days ago. He graduated from South High School, the same place my dad did, and he graduated in 1935 and went on an LDS mission came back, went to the University of Utah, and one day, while at the University of Utah, saw an aircraft flying over and said, you know what, there's, there's a war coming, and the best way to be in that war is, is to be in the air. Walt well, went on to become a pilot, and was sent over to England, where he met Hugh Rollin Roper. And it just so happened that uh, Hugh Roper, well, Hugh was from uh, a little town called Gandy, Utah, and he'd been a school teacher and he had enlisted and he also had become a pilot and had his own aircraft uh, with the 93rd bomb group over in England and the name of the uh, aircraft was called the exterminator and he was looking for a co-pilot and well Walt had just come over and he heard that Walt was from Utah uh, Benjamin to be precise and so here he is uh, Roper there on the far left and uh, well, Walt uh, standing next to him as the co-pilot. Walt and Hugh's friendship was cemented in combat. 18 missions flying together here in Exterminator out of Harwick, England. Let's talk a little bit about the model I built of Exterminator real quick. Uh, it was an earlier model, B-24D, and this particular model is from uh, Monogram. It's in 148 scale. And I had taken and, and put a squadron clear canopy on it and a clear nose that uh, was in much better shape than what comes in the kit. Also those early B-24s they had a needle blade props and so I wanted to try and, and simulate that. They didn't have a ball turret but they did have what was called a tunnel gun. So I tried to get it as accurate as I could in the uh, nose art and the painting and the whole nine yards. Anyway, um, before they, uh, before too long, well, Walt was given his own crew and uh, here he is with his co-pilot uh, who is the second one in on the uh, on the top row uh, Larry Coon wearing the shades well they uh, got sent over to Benghazi the 93rd would be temporarily detached to uh, North Africa and fly out of Benghazi on a special mission called Operation Tidal Wave that was to bomb the oil fields of Ploesti, Romania and try and deprive Hitler of his much needed oil for his war machine. The mission was to be a low level mission. It had never been tried before with B-24s. There were going to be five groups involved in this in this mission. The 376 known as the Pyramiders and they were already there in North Africa. They'd been there for quite some time. The uh, 98th Bomb Group, which had been there uh, as well for quite some time in North Africa. And these were two battle-hardened groups that uh, flew around with uh, well, pink airplanes. They weren't really pink, they were painted a sand color, but the sand had faded to this uh, pale terracotta. And then of course the 93rd with Hugh and, uh, and Walt. And the 44th was also an, one of the groups from England, the Flying Eight Balls. They were assigned to this mission. And a brand new group, the 389th uh, Bomb Group, which had brand spanking new B-24s. This was their first time in combat. Of course, the desert was a completely different ball game than being in England and what they were used to there. So it took a little bit of getting used to, but the crews trained for well over a month, uh, flying low level and, and getting used to uh, uh, bombing targets. Uh, at low level which was something completely different than what they had been doing before. The date set for the mission was Sunday August 1st 1943 and uh, this low level mission they were to fly in at uh, 200 feet uh, you can see here by this picture some of the guys well because of the uh, anti-aircraft flak and whatnot actually flew quite a bit lower. 178 B-24s lumbered into the air that morning one crashed on takeoff 
and uh, they lost a few others along the way, but uh, pretty much uneventful for the uh, for the 93rd on the way to the target. But once they got close to the target, well, some things changed. First off, the lead group, the 376th, well, uh, they didn't make the turn they were supposed to make. They turned a little bit early. And everybody, of course, followed the leader, and everybody on the 93rd, no, there's a problem here. We're not supposed to turn here. And uh, Colonel Addison Baker, who was leaving, leading the 93rd that day, saw that there were some uh, refineries off to his left, and he made the decision to uh, make a turn and head towards the refineries. Now, they had been trained on these little uh, scale models here of the approach to their targets, so they knew them very, very well. But now they were coming in from a completely different angle and over an area which they were told had a lot of anti-aircraft fire. Uh, the lead element of the 93rd was uh, three aircraft. The first was with, uh, uh, well, it was named Hell's Wench. And uh, here's a model that uh, that I built of Hell's Wench, and the uh, Colonel Baker was the uh, head of the 93rd Bomb Group at the time, and he was the pilot, and the co-pilot was uh, John Jerstad, and both of these men were posthumously given the Medal of Honor. As they neared the target, ground fire increased, many many hits on the aircraft and burst into flames it uh, wasn't sure they were going to make it to the uh, refinery. The colonel pulled up as hard as he could and he signaled to uh, Walt Stewart, who was his deputy lead, to uh, lead the group over. Well, hell's wench. A couple guys tried to bail out as they gained a little bit of altitude, but they were just way too low. And uh, hell's wench crashed into the uh, into the refinery complex. And actually, this picture taken from another aircraft shows that fire right there is of uh, hell's wench burning on the refinery grounds. A pretty sad story. And this particular picture was taken uh, by some Romanians after the battle, and this is the remains of the aircraft. Also in this lead element of three aircraft that were leading the 93rd was uh, Lieutenant Enoch Porter and uh, he was fairly new to all of this stuff and he was kind of on the right side of this element of three in an aircraft called Euro Clyden, uh, known as the Storm and here's a model I built of that particular aircraft. Well he took a hit directly in the bomb bay as they had opened up the bomb bay doors and remember these guys were about a hundred feet trying to pull up to go over the uh, the refineries. He hit the bailout and several of his men did jump and did get out. The aircraft, of course, Bombay on fire couldn't get rid of the bombs, continued on over the uh, target and uh, several miles to a little town called Plo Pu where it came down, hit, an air, hit a tree and went into this, uh, this little school building and uh, killed the rest of the crew that was on board. Well, now that leaves Walt, who was the uh, deputy lead on this particular mission. And he'd already taken a lot of hits to his aircraft, and he saw the colonel go down, and he saw Lieutenant Porter in flames going over in flames, and he knew he had to lead the group. So he took over and uh, opened his bomb bay and actually dropped three of the six bombs. Three of them hung up, wasn't able to get them out, but he actually went over the target and dropped bombs on the target. This particular model, of course, is the same thing. It's the you know monogram 48 scale. I hand painted the nose art for Utah Man on it, made sure I put the proper needle blade props on it, and got the right uh, canopy and whatnot. I wanted to make sure this was absolutely right to uh, pay tribute to Walt. Anyway, after Walt dropped his bombs uh, and got out into the clear, he could see right in front of him was this this like 300 foot radio tower. There was no way he was going to be able to pull up and go over it. And there was no way he was going to be able to go around it, so he did something called skidding the aircraft, where he flips the rudder and basically just puts one wingtip down in the street and one straight up in the air, and just went right on by this this uh, radio tower until they were clear, and then they straightened it out and got into clear air, and they started to search for um, some of the others from the group. And well, at first they couldn't find anybody. Eventually, though. Uh, on the way back, they were able to find uh, the old exterminator, the old 717, with his friend in it. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't keep up because he had so many holes shot in his aircraft, and the exterminator went on with the rest of that group. 
Later on, he found out that the exterminator had uh, gotten into a, a cloud bank and collided with uh, another one of the American aircraft and had uh, taken the life of all of his former crew members, uh, including his good friend Hugh Roland Roper. When the uh, Utah man landed back in Benghazi, they counted 365 holes in the aircraft. The thing was absolutely shot to pieces. He was the last one to land at his particular uh, landing strip that day. Anyway, due to the fact that some of the uh, groups got lost, it was not considered a successful mission. Anyway, they went back to England, and uh, it wasn't long after that, Walt had already flown his uh, 25 missions. And uh, what's sad is his friend, uh, Hugh Roper, was on his 25th mission when he went down. And uh, Walt decided it was time to hang it up and head home. He, he had done his duty. And so they sent him home in this aircraft called Boomerang. And uh, Walt went on to have a wonderful, wonderful life and career. And has, over the years, talked to a lot of schools, a lot of church groups. Uh, I personally had a chance to interview Walt uh, several years back. And uh, what a wonderful, wonderful man he is wonderful, wonderful legacy to the state of Utah, and it was my honor to build some B-24s uh, in honor of the 93rd, the men of Tidal Wave, and in particular, Hugh Roper and Walt Stewart. <laughs>